I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the Cisco Certification Video Practice Exam, where today's topic is OSPF network types and router types. So we've got something here for CCNA and CCNP candidates alike. As always, we're going to go through the questions at a pretty good clip, so feel free to hit the pause button if need be, if you need a few extra seconds to contemplate your answer or answers, because as always, my multiple choice questions are select all that apply. I go through the questions pretty quickly, so we've got plenty of time at the end of the video to go through the answers, because I just don't want to give you the answers, but I want to show them to you in action on live Cisco routers and switches, which we'll be doing quite a bit of today. Let's jump into question one. Which of these OSPF network types has no designated router? We talk a lot about DRs and the DR rules, especially in the CCNA study, but which one of these has no DR? Question two, which of these statements correctly describes an OSPF broadcast network? Let's go to question three, which of these statements describes an OSPF internal router? And then finally today, which of these statements describes a situation that will result in an OSPF router becoming an autonomous system border router? All right, I'll bring the live equipment up in just a moment and we'll take a look at the answers. I want to invite you out to the blog, the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com, where we've got plenty of free videos, tutorials, webinar invitations, and all kinds of other great tools to help you get Cisco certified. And of course, at the main website, thebryantadvantage.com, we've got over 300 tutorials waiting for you there. We'll bring up the equipment here to illustrate this particular network type that has no designated router. Now broadcast networks will have a DR. Multicast networks, there's really no such thing as an OSPF multicast network type. But there is a point to point. And I'm going to bring a pot up right now. And here on router 3, as you can tell by the 30 R3s here on the screen, router 3 is on a point to point network with router 1 and it's also on a broadcast network with router 2 and I'll illustrate that with show IP OSPF neighbor and while this command doesn't show you the interface excuse me the network type it's going to give you some clues and when you see serial 1 down here or especially Ethernet 0 that's a pretty good gamble then that your Ethernet 0 network is going to be a broadcast network but serial 1 could be one of a couple of different kinds of networks but here's another tip off for you, and this gets a lot of students and our network admins in the field as well the first time they see it, because we've got a dash here where we expect to see what? DR, BDR, or DR other. So we tend to look at that dash and say, well, OSPF isn't done you know, yet, but here the adjacency is at full, so OSPF has definitely converged. We have a full adjacency, but we have a dash here you're going to see that when you have a point-to-point -point network. And I'm going to verify that that is a point-to-point -point network with the rather long-winded command show IP OSPF interface followed by the interface type and the number. You can run show IP OSPF inter interface by itself, but if you do that, it's going to give you that OSPF information for every single interface on the router running OSPF. Here, we just want serial one. And there's a lot of great information here. You should definitely be very comfortable and familiar with the output of this particular command for your exams and for working with OSPF in the real world. But you can see the network type is point to point. When you have a point to point network, you are not going to have a DR or a BDR elected because you really don't need one because by definition, what is a point to point network? It has two hosts on it, right? Or two devices, that's it. So you really don't need the flooding because you've got two endpoints and that's it. So also point to multipoint is also not going to have a DR because OSPF considers a point to multipoint network to be a collection of point to point links. That's more for you CCNP candidates than CCNA, but it's good information to know. So here, neither C nor D is going to have a designated router. 
Now which of these correctly describes an OSPF broadcast network? Let's bring the live equipment back up and this time I'll run show IP OSPF interface Ethernet 0. And again be very familiar with the information here and you can see that we've verified that this is a broadcast network, OSPF network. And we do have a DR-BDR election as you can see there. We've already had that election take place. So going back to the choices, uh, A is definitely true, B is not true. And as for the dead and hello times, let's bring the routers back up and you can see what the defaults are and it's 10 and 40 for hello and dead timers on a broadcast network, so neither C and D or are correct. Question three, very straightforward here, but it's not really a gotcha, but it's occasionally confused. An OSPF router that has all of its interfaces in the same area is an internal router. It does not have to have all of its interfaces in area zero. So the only true statement here is B. With C and D, you're getting into total stub areas and stub areas, that kind of thing. And an internal router doesn't have to be in one of those areas. It could be, but it's not a default. So the only default that's true here, or which one describes an OSPF internal router, is definitely B. And finally, which of these results in an OSPF router becoming an ASBR? Performing route redistribution. Straight and simple. You don't do much of that in the CCNA. You'll do a lot of it in your CCNP studies. But when you perform route redistribution on an OSPF router, it becomes an autonomous system border router and ASBR. So that concludes today's video practice exam. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to check out my YouTube channel. We've got over 100 other free Cisco certification tutorials and video practice exams just waiting for you. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you out of the Bulldog blog at thebryantadvantage.blogspot.com.